Hey, what's going on everybody? So in this video, we're gonna talk about the skills you need as a Django developer in order to get a job in the industry. Now, I'm making this video because I got a question on LinkedIn today, so what I decided to do is answer this person and then it gave me the idea of going ahead and writing up an article for this. So what I'm gonna do is actually go through this article and then break it down piece by piece and talk about what I wrote here. So let's go ahead and get my face out of the way here. And this is the article. And I also have the question as a picture here, so I just screenshot of the DM and we'll just go through this. So if you don't already follow me on LinkedIn, go ahead and do that. And this post is linked up in the video description, so if you wanna follow along and read what I wrote here, make sure to check that out. So this is the question here, and essentially they're asking about the proficiency that you need in Django in order to start applying. So I'm gonna pretend that we have a position for a junior Django developer, and then we'll actually get into the mid-level and senior positions. So the first thing I'm gonna say here is that there is no one right answer, but I'm actually gonna go beyond that because I don't wanna give you that cop-out answer. And the reason why I say there is no right answer up front is because that all depends on uh, the position that you're going for, how your interview went, what's needed in that specific position and the requirements. So for example, I actually got a job as a Django developer without any real experience or well, no experience actually. I studied for three months and then got my first job and I've actually hired people that have had no experience at all to work as a Django developer. And in my specific case, so this is that whole use case thing, it depends on who's hiring you and why they're hiring you. In my specific case, I knew somebody that knew a little bit of Python and I needed somebody to do some grunt work, basically uh, clean up some code here and there, write some basic stuff and just do some lifting for me. But we had other people working on the core application, uh, including me in that position. So I needed somebody to fill in some knowledge gaps and I understood that they were gonna learn along the way. So I hired them obviously for a lot less than you normally would hire a developer for, but I was expecting them to learn along the way. So in this case, this person had no experience and virtually no knowledge. I think they just knew how to set up like a basic application uh, with nothing to it. Like they knew about Django and that was it. So there's some light at the end of the tunnel for those of you that don't know much. Uh, that's one example. So I just wanted to give you that part of the spectrum. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and start with the junior developers. And what I'm gonna do is create a case scenario where uh, let's say I'm looking to hire a Django developer and I'm looking for somebody that's gonna take direction from a lead developer and somebody that can execute tasks efficiently and be coached up in the process. So this person has a senior to rely on, but I also don't want somebody that is gonna be a nuisance to the senior, somebody that's not gonna be uh, dragging the team down that can add to it, but doesn't need to necessarily be the lead. We're looking for somebody that just knows what they're doing and can do some heavy lifting here. So that's our example here. And let's just go ahead and start with that. So what does this person need to know? So the first thing is, I'm going to want you to know how to perform CRUD operations in Django. If you can perform CRUD operations, I know that you know how to work with a database, you know how to set up a basic application, and you know about Django and some of the core concepts. And uh, you probably know about the templating engine and how that works and just go through that life cycle of what virtually every application would have. So if you know how to perform CRUD, op CRUD operations, uh, that's one thing, that's one requirement. I almost said you're good to go, but that's not gonna be the case. So CRUD, that's the first one. Next, we'll just go ahead and add in authentication and authorization along with working with user roles. So just like CRUD, handling user permissions, like what a user can do on the site, maybe something needs to be viewed by an admin, uh, and then you have like customer level users. Uh, I want you to make sure that you know how to add in this functionality or at least modify it if we need to and just understand how all of that works and maybe how the sessions work in Django and so on. So user roles, authentication, that's virtually the next level here. And then we'll jump into static files. So CRUD, authentication and static files, that's gonna be in virtually every application. So static files, uh, do you know how to host some CSS files and where to host them, your JavaScript files, and where to host images, user uploaded content, and maybe even store something like PDFs if users are submitting these. Do you know how to work with static files? You don't need a real high level of understanding of this, but I wanna make sure that you can connect basic static files and know what you're doing here. So that's this specific position. We'll just keep referring to that because if this intimidates you, well, one, make sure that you just learn more, but two, uh, not every position is gonna need this level of education. This is just our demo scenario for a junior developer. Now, we're gonna go ahead and go into building APIs. Now, nowadays, uh, Django is used 
in a lot of cases to build out APIs. It's not always used that way, but a lot of people do use it like you would Node and Express to build out an API or PHP and Laravel, Ruby on Rails. Uh, Django is great for building out APIs. So along with that, that kind of goes hand in hand with just the Django framework along with the Django REST framework. Can you work with a Django REST framework and can you build out a basic API? Do you know about basic REST operations or not operations, but uh, the core rules to it and best REST practices? Do you at least have an understanding to that? And do you know how to build a simple API? That's going to be very important in this example. So with this, uh, I also threw in project architecture. So I'm going to go easy on the juniors here just because uh, this could be a more advanced topic and it depends on where we need you because usually a senior level developer will actually have this structured out for you. But do you know about separating apps? Do you know how to do that? Why you need to do that? And uh, how to properly separate URLs and views and basically how to con construct an app? Do you know where to store templates? Uh, the different ways of doing that because there are different ways in doing that. Uh, you can store temp templates at a global level and in the app level. So do you understand basic project architecture? So I'll give you a slight pass here, but I would hope you know some basic functionality here. You don't need to know it well, just understand it. So with this, I almost didn't add this one, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in because some people do skip this part. I want to make sure you know basic uh, web development and how the web works here. So uh, things like First of all, basic Python, I'm going to throw that in. Do you know Python syntax? Because Django is written in Python. Uh, HTML, even if you're not working with the front end, I want to make sure that you at least understand how it works. Uh, HTML is not that hard to learn. Spend some time there. CSS, get some basic fun fundamentals of CSS. That's a whole nother path. Just know how it works and how to connect to a CSS file and how to do that with Django. Because there's a chance that you're going to have a front end developer write some CSS hand you the template, you're going to need to know how to connect that. With this, I'm going to throw in Git and GitHub if you're working with a team. Understand that and then also understand the basic request response cycle and HTTP methods. How do you request something? What happens on that request? And how do you get information back in the form of JSON data or a template? Just understand these things. You'll do yourself a, a huge favor by learning these and make sure that somebody's not having to coach you up on this inside of a or at a company. So in summary, this is the way I put it here. I want to make sure that you at least know Django and web verbiage. So even if I ask you about something that is more of an advanced topic, I at least want to know that you know about it and that you can at least speak that language and then maybe go do some research on it. I just want to make sure that we can communicate and the team can move forward. So what I did is I actually linked up the docs and I want to talk about some of these more advanced topics. So uh, in here, first of all, as a junior, you're probably going to need to learn about half of this in order to actually uh, create a functional application and even apply for a position. But uh, there's things like, um, we'll throw this in here, we have uh, middleware, we have, let's see, cores, uh, caching, stuff like that. If that's a little bit too advanced for you, that's fine. But if I ask you about it, I at least want to know that you know these concepts or at least about them. And then you can go in the documentation and start looking through them. So. In most cases, you're going to be learning on the job anyways. That's why I don't really hold it against you. So just make sure you can at least speak that language. So we're going to get more into the technicals. I went on the high level overview here and talked about what you should be able to do. But then we'll actually go into uh, the actual tech here and specifics. So I added this section because uh, I want to give you some practical examples of what you should be able to build out. So there's one that's going to be pretty much an absolute must. And then the other two are going to be recommendations. So I have to do app e-commerce and a social network. So let's talk about why I put these on here. So before I say anything else here, I want to make sure that you don't spend months trying to build out all three of these before you apply. If you can build a to do app, just go ahead and apply with that being said, make sure that you can build it without looking at a tutorial. If you can do a couple of Google searches, maybe look at Stack Overflow, look up the Django documentation, maybe some GitHub source code, that's great, that's fine. You do that on the job anyways, but I wanna make sure you're not copying a tutorial. So make sure that you can at least build these without having to watch a full tutorial. So a to-do app, I listed this here because it's gonna give you the core CRUD operations. You're gonna to need to create, update, and delete. That can also go in the form of a notes app, a recipe app, anything that has that functionality. And with that, I would say go ahead and uh, 
add in your own features, add in some authentication, user permissions, and try building it twice. So I put that on there because there's function-based views and class-based views, which I'm going to talk about later. If you can at least do that, I mean, I don't know if I could hire you if you didn't know this for this specific example. I know I've hired people with less experience, but I'm going to make sure that you at least understand how to do that without following the tutorial. You should be able to set up a project and build all of this out. Now with that, I'm going to throw in an e-commerce website. So the reason why I threw this in is because you're going to get CRUD functionality. So you're going to want to create, read, and update items, um, maybe adding a product to the database, ordering something, but you're also going to get a more complex database design. Things like database relationships, uh, tagging system, search and pagination. If you're going to add this into your application, like an e-commerce site would normally have, uh, you're going to learn a lot in this process. So I would highly recommend trying to build out an e-commerce site or something like that, because what you're going to learn in this process is great. And if you can do it without watching a tutorial, uh, more power to you, that is going to really show your knowledge base with that. So I also threw in a social network. Social network is going to be a lot like the e-commerce site, but you are going to have different database uh, designs here, more functionality, things like uh, how do you add in the friend system? What about the following feature? How do you follow somebody? What does that look like in the database? Uh, what's the What does the view layer look like? How do you build that out? And what about likes and upvotes? Depending on what you want to do, uh, try to build something out. And how do you ensure that a user sees only their friends post in a feed and how you order that data. So if you can do that, there's just so much you're going to learn. I always say you're going to learn the most by actually building something. That's why I referenced these here. So social network is a great way to learn e-commerce. And the one that I would expect you to know how to do is build out a crowd application, like a to do app. So let's go into the technicals. We talked about the high level stuff. Let's go into the actual details. So the first thing I listed here is the basics. In the basics, maybe I'm missing some things, but know how to set up a project, know about apps and how those work, views and URLs, templates, and the templating language, and the Django admin panel. So that's the first thing. The next one here is gonna be class-based views. So class-based views, I know a lot of people don't like them just because they have a layer of abstraction to them. They're a little bit more complex. Uh, you're still gonna need to learn how to use those even if you don't use them in your own application. There's a good chance that the company you're working with is gonna utilize them because there's a lot of power to them. So even if you don't like working with them, learn them and at least understand them, at least know how to work with it if you need to. That's gonna be something that I would expect you to know. Now, models and the Django ORM. So models, this is your database design. This is how you design relationships, the actual database architecture. You should be able to put together your models, create those relationships. These are all things you would do in those examples of the social network and e-commerce site that I listed here. So designing models and working with a Django built-in ORM. So I want to make sure you know how to read from the database, how to write to it. That's obviously the CRUD functionality. I want to make sure you have an understanding of doing that. Uh, model forms, they're an amazing tool. Uh, even if you're using class-based views, you're, you're usually going to use some form of model form if you're building in or if you're using built-in views. Uh, just make sure you understand them. Great tool. I would expect you to know them. Uh, signals, I didn't have much to say here. Other than the fact that uh, they're important, I use them all the time. Make sure you know about them. Uh, I use them in a lot of applications and I would expect somebody to know them. And with the next one, we have serializers. So this is more Django REST framework stuff, but I kind of have the expectation if you know Django, you know the Django REST framework and how to build out an API with it. I want to make sure that you know how serializers work, that you know how to nest your serializers and how to uh, make sure to follow REST practices and build those out. So those are a key component of the Django REST framework. Serializers are one of the technicals that I would throw in there. So session and token authentication, if you're not using the Django REST framework, you're probably gonna use session authentication. Uh, if you're using the Django, if, you're, if you are using the Django REST framework, you're probably gonna use token authentication in many cases, but that changes. Uh, I would expect you to at least know about both of them and how to, how to set that up and how to work with tokens or sessions. Now, these next things are gonna be important but not deal breakers it means that i wouldn't hold it against you if you didn't know it but these are going to be big pluses if you do so let's go ahead and look at this so if you're deploying an application uh or if you know how to deploy an application there's a good chance that wherever you get hired there's a senior that has already done this or is already going to take care of this part but if you do know it that's great it's just going to look better on your resume or in the conversation uh, it's something that i would love to see middleware 
Again, I wouldn't hold it against you. It is more of a complex topic, but knowing middleware, caching, context managers, view sets and routers, even though I don't like view sets and routers and don't normally use them, I would like you to at least know about them and then writing test. Now this one, I'm gonna go a little light on. Uh, a lot of people, uh, they, they live by writing tests and me personally, I don't really write tests, so I wouldn't hold that against you, but that's a, a nice to know. If you can write your own test, that's great. We're gonna go ahead and throw that in there, but I would highly recommend looking that up. So what does a mid-level to a senior developer need to know? So this is how I summarized it. A senior, a senior level developer or more of a mid-level developer isn't much more than a junior developer other than their depth of knowledge. Some width, you're gonna need to know more things. So what I just said is uh, basically all of the above plus the important and the deal breaker section. So I would expect a senior to know this right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and minus out the test because that's not something that I do, <laughs> even though I would be considered more senior level. Um, I would expect you to know that with a with more depth in your knowledge base, understand it well, why it's done, how it's done, and so on. So I would need you to know all of that. And you're also gonna be asked a lot of questions. Uh, you're gonna need to make key decisions at the company. So uh, usually you're gonna have a junior developer that you're gonna need to guide. The junior developer is gonna ask you questions. You need to know how to answer them and how to lead them. You're gonna be asked to make key decisions on the core architecture of your application. So knowing how to properly structure the app, how to write the app in the most efficient way. As a senior, I would go more into not the technicals of what you know, but how you know it and try to maybe go into that aspect of it. Because seniors really know just one step above it. They know a little bit more information, but they usually know it very, very well and the whys of what they're doing. They don't just answer basic questions like, this is what you know a view is, but they know how to write that view and how to make it efficient. So that's basically my breakdown of a senior and a mid-level developer. And what I actually did is I actually have a video on Django interview questions that I released about two years ago now. So I linked that up along with my Python Django explained in eight minutes. I go over the core concepts and actually show them in the video. So it'd be nice to look at if you're wanting to get a better understanding, check those videos out, make sure you look at this article too. Uh, and that's it for this video. So I just want to break that down. I hope that information was helpful. I'll see you all in another video.